All right, in this lesson here, what we're going to be doing is taking a look at the viewports inside of Unreal Ed. Now, the first thing you'll notice is that when you fire up the software, you've got four different viewports. Right now, we've got a top viewport, a front viewport, a side viewport, and a perspective viewport. Now, the difference between these different viewport types, the front, top, and side viewports are what are known as orthographic viewports. These are flat views. They're non-objective. In other words, our wireframes do not distort inside these views. And when I say distort, what I'm talking about is, you know, if you were to go out and actually stand on a railroad track that goes on and on and on forever, you'll actually see the two rails come to a point off in the distance. And this is what we would actually see in our perspective view as well. This is a distortion that's occurring. Now, on these orthographic views, again, the top, front, and side views, we don't get that distortion. Everything stays non-objective, which is very handy. Plus, it is, you know, not to be very simple about this, but it actually is a view of the top of your map, a view of the front of your map. You get the idea. Now, with that out of the way, let's go ahead and spend just a second, Logan, and talk about some viewport navigation. Now, I know we did, you know, cover some of the basics of it in the last lesson. But I feel it's uh, pretty important to cover it in this lesson in case anybody actually skipped the last one. And, you know, viewport navigation obviously belongs in the viewports lesson. All right. Okay, so starting with the perspective view. If you simply want to look around your view, you can hold the right mouse button and drag the mouse around. And it's basically like standing still and looking around your map. If you want to look around and kind of inspect things. Exactly. Okay, so if I want to actually move forwards or backwards now, what would I need to do? Hold the left mouse button and drag up and down, and you'll actually move the camera forwards and backwards. You still have left and right for turning the camera. So I could actually use the left mouse button then, and then by just pushing my mouse around, I could actually walk through a level if that level was just on, let's just say, one level. In other words, a plane, basically. All right, you could just walk around a flat flo uh, floor, basically, and okay, look very around. Cool. All right, so then what happens if I actually need to go up and down between a multi-level type map? Well, you could pan by using both mouse buttons and dragging up or down, left or right. And in this case, uh, both of these movements will physically move the camera around. Okay, very cool. So this is perspective navigation. How is there any difference when we go to an orthographic view? Is the navigation any different there? Uh, it's similar. It's just a little bit simpler because you have one less one less axis to deal with. Okay. If you want to simply pan around an orthographic view, hold the left mouse button and drag, and you can pan around your view. To zoom, you use both mouse buttons, and then you can zoom in or out. Oh, very nice. Okay, so now the next thing I'd like to go ahead and do is point out this camera. Logan keeps talking about how we're moving our camera around, and you can actually see our perspective camera right now. He's moving his mouse over it, as a matter of fact. It's an eye icon with a red arrow, and that red arrow just happens to be showing us the way that we're looking at the moment. And what this will do is lead us into the first icon in the discussion of all of the icons available up on the toolbar at the top of each of our viewports. Right there, we've got real-time playback. Go ahead and talk about that, Logan. Well, real-time preview will make sure that the editor keeps updating this view, even if it's not active. Also, if there's anything that would be moving in the view, it'll constantly update without you having to interact with it. An easy way to demonstrate this right now by leaving it off by default, if you go back down to your perspective view and, let's say, look the other way, I'll turn around real quick. Now, take a look at the camera, the eye icon again. The arrow is still pointing back towards our player start and weapon base. Now, the moment he clicks in that view, look at that. It updated. Now, if he goes up and he turns the real-time preview on and now goes back down and moves around, watch what happens. Ah, we see that the arrow is now actually updating. And if he moves forward, look at this. The whole camera is moving now. Exactly. So now it's basically just keeping that view in a constant draw mode. This is also useful in your perspective view if you want to take a look at an animated texture. It's also useful if you're moving a brush or other object in one view but want to see how it's looking in a different view. You can toggle the real-time preview on and then keep it keep an eye on what's moving from multiple views. And we'll be using this later on, I'm sure, when we get into the advanced level design lesson of this VTM. Okay, so we'll go ahead and turn that off. I'll, I will, you know, go ahead and take the time to mention the fact that if you've got these things turned on, it can really start to slow things down when you start getting into a very complicated level. All right, next we've got three icons located next to the little joystick. We've got a T, F, and S. And this basically just stands for our top, front, and side viewport. And you'll notice that each of our orthographic views right now have the appropriate icon lit up, lit up for that view. In other words, right now we've got a top view, and you can see that the T has been highlighted right now. And over in the front view, the F has actually been highlighted. Okay, so you can see that as we click on these icons, we can now easily change to a different view. Simple enough. And if we go down to our perspective view, we can also change that into one of the orthographic views as well. 
Now, to get our perspective view back, that brings us over to all of these icons over here. And basically, all of these icons will take us into a perspective view, but they all represent a different draw mode, if you will. And we're not going to talk about all of them right now. They're not necessarily going to be relevant in what we're doing. Some of them will become more important as we get involved with more complex levels. But, Logan, go ahead and take a second and talk about some of the important ones. Okay. First, you have the ability to draw the perspective in a wireframe. This is very useful if you need to see exactly where brushes are and need to see where they are in a 3D view. So you could zoom in and like look around certain brushes in a perspective wireframe. It could also be really handy if you're hunting for something in a very complex level and you can't see through all of the walls. Right. Okay. So moving over a few, you have the textured view. And that is showing even if you've rebuilt lighting and have light maps, it will still show the textures without light maps. This would be useful if you're trying to align textures in like a dark area of a map. Exactly. Went over from that, we have the lighting, which is showing just the light maps by themselves. So you can get an idea of how things are shadowing, colored shadows, etc. Went over is the text, uh, lighting and textures. And this is uh, showing what the lighting will actually look like. So it's very useful when you're lighting your map. So now right now, you want to talk a little bit about, while, while we're on that particular draw mode right there, you want to talk a little bit about this actually being the real engine viewport, if you will? Yes, this is actually rendered in the same way that the game is displayed when you're actually playing. So if you've got your geometry and your lighting rebuilt, what we're looking at here is going to be exactly what we see in-game? Right. Excellent. Okay, so... Moving over to the last two icons, you have Lock to Selected and Show Large Vertices. Let me demonstrate Lock to Selected by looking at an actor. So, Lock to Selected Actor, let me deselect everything first. If I toggle this on, and then, let's pick on the light, if I select the light by left-clicking on it, you notice that the view snaps to where that light was. Also, if I look at this in the top view, you can see now that the light and the camera are basically locked together. So now what's really cool, actually go ahead and turn on the, there you go, real-time preview. And now as Logan comes down into his perspective view and starts navigating around, look what's happening. The light is now stuck to the actual camera. And this can be really handy when lining up, let's say, directional lights or other actor types. Right. Okay? So in other words, the light's not just point-constrained to it, but it's also orient-constrained as well. So it's going to actually be rotating to, to match the same orientation as the camera. All right, so let's take a real quick look. Oh, by the way, when he goes ahead and turns this off, and now he moves, you'll notice that they're now unlocked from one another. All right. Let me go ahead and toggle off the real-time preview as well. Okay, so one more thing to show as far as all these icons are concerned, and that is the large vertices. All right, in order to show that it's, it's better to have a brush selected, so I'm simply going to left-click on the construction brush, activate show large vertices, and I can see vertices are a lot Whoa. easier to see. Those are some large vertices. Okay, well, it does its job. So go ahead and turn that off now. And I'm sure we'll be using that a little bit later on as we get in there and we start have to manip having to manipulate some of these vertices around. Now let's go ahead and talk about the old right-click menu that we can gain access to. Okay, if you right-click anywhere in the gray area of these uh, viewport toolbars, you'll get a menu. And part of that menu shows a sort of uh, view filter, if you can think of it like that. It'll basically just show exactly what this viewport is going to be drawing. Like you can have certain elements not show in a particular view. So when we start dealing with a very complex scene, then it's very handy to go in there and to be able to turn off very complex things. Like an example, fluid surfaces, it's very dense, and, and we may not that may be kind of uh, messing up our view, if you will. Right. Once you're done tweaking it, you can just turn its uh, display off, and then it's out of your way for that certain view. Very nice. Very nice. All right, so anything else, Logan, that you can think of that you'd like to talk about as far as the viewports are concerned? Nah, inside the viewport, before we actually move up to the menu bar at the top? That's definitely enough to get you started. Okay, excellent. So moving on up to the top, first thing, before we go up to the view menu, let me go ahead and point out that these four different viewports are actually fixed viewports right now. In other words, they're docked into the editor. And we do have the ability to kind of unlock these or to make them floating so that we can go in there and treat them like regular windows. And we can do this by simply coming up to the menu bar at the top, clicking on View, and then coming down to Viewports. From in here, you'll see there's Floating and there's Fixed. So let's go ahead and click on Floating. 
Ah, now we have four different floating windows that we could, if we wanted to, resize. You can see right there that the mouse icon is actually changing to a set of arrows. And we can also go in there and we can maximize one of these views. We can minimize them. We can close them, etc. So that's very nice. Now, if we resize these, which we're not going to do that right now because we're happy with the layout of them, but if we resize them and then switch back over to fix, which let's go and switch it back to fix now by coming back up to view, down to viewports and fixed, it will basically save the way that you've resized them. So that's very convenient. But let me point this out. By coming back up here to viewports again, you'll notice that under fix we have new viewport and it's grayed out when we're using fixed viewports. If we switch back over to floating real fast and now come back up here to viewports, you'll notice we can now create a new viewport if we'd like. And in this new viewport, we can set it to any view we'd like. So in other words, we can set it to a new, yeah, to a perspective view. And you can see that this perspective view is moving independent of the perspective view over here. Okay? And we can also do a top, front, side. You get the idea. Okay? And they're all independent. So let's go ahead and close that out, Logan. And let's go ahead and fix it again by coming back to view and down to viewports. And we'll go back to fixed. All right, so that's locked them back in place. Now, there's another thing that we can do as far as viewport configuration is concerned, and that is basically Unreal Ed gives us a few different ways that we can actually configure the viewports. In other words, ways that we can lay out the viewport windows. By coming up here to view and coming back down to viewports, you'll notice we've got configure. And from inside configure, you'll notice we've got four different options in here to choose from. We've got the four view, which is currently what's selected right now. And then we've got three viewports on top and a large one on bottom. And then we've got the one large one on the left. And then we've got a two split. Be careful in here. With some video drivers, we found that by clicking on the X in the upper right-hand corner to close this dialog will actually kind of lock everything up. It doesn't crash Unreal Ed, but it does kind of put us in a state where that's locked. So let's just go ahead and click cancel to get out of that. Okay, so Anything else, Logan, that you can think of that we want to talk about as far as viewports are concerned? Or does that pretty much cover everything that everybody needs to know at the moment? That covers the basics. Okay, cool. So now, before we exit out of this lesson, let's go ahead and spend just a second and talk about how we can select brushes or various actors and how we can also do like a marquee type select as well. Okay. Simple selection is easy. You saw before when I needed to select the construction brush, I, s I simply clicked on it. If I need to deselect anything, I can click out in space, and it will deselect whatever I've got selected. To so go and select any actor or brush, I can simply hold, con I can simply left click on it, and it will select it. If I need to do multiple selections, we can hold control and keep clicking on various actors or brushes and make a and do a multiple selection. Okay. And then how about doing a marquee type selection? Let me deselect everything. If you need to drag a selection around some actors or brushes, you can hold Control and Alt, then left drag, and then you'll get a little selection box, and you can use that to grab multiple actors. Very nice, very nice. And then real quick, for moving things around once you've made the selection? You simply hold, if you're in the camera, uh, free camera, you can hold Control and then left drag, and you can drag those selected actors around, actors or brushes. Okay, and if you do a control right click and drag, you're going to rotate. Right. And we'll be getting into that a lot heavier a little bit later on when we start talking about how to move the pivot point around, et cetera, et cetera. So that pretty much wraps up everything that I wanted us to talk about in this lesson right here. Hope you guys got a lot out of it. And from here, we'll move on to the next, which will be BSP brushes. Thanks a lot, guys.